First of all, a lot of the manufacturing facilities that we have still have got legacy systems. There's a lot of old equipment still left in many of these plants. If you take powertrain plants, for example, across the automotive industry, um, that was supposed to be phased out by 2030. So not many companies were putting a whole lot of maintenance effort and capital equipment improvements in powertrain plants. In assembly plants, uh, you know, likewise, you've got, uh, you know, some old body and white equipment, uh, you know, um, robots can be replaced or refurbished and uh, you get equipment like that. But um, maybe even more importantly, that equipment, you know, that was in the facilities, you know, that's let's just say it's over 10 years old, uh, was never designed with the kind of sensors and the kind of, you know, um, uh, ability to communicate with the on-floor systems. So that's that's one. The other, and and this happened very early in my career, I, uh, when I was growing up in manufacturing, I thought everybody was from Missouri because all I kept hearing was, show me, you know, prove it to me that that this works. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's for a lot of reasons, but I think one of the big reasons is safety. You know, you look at, um, a manufacturing floor and you know, a well-designed, well-implemented uh, manufacturing system isn't necessarily inherently dangerous, but it is inherently unforgiving. So if you do something that violates a process or a system, um, you can put yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. And um, I think that's one of the factors, uh, you know, now you're, you're talking about maybe letting them, you know, an AI make a decision that could impact safety. So there's a lot of conservatism in manufacturing. I think that that's one of the issues that, uh, you know, just has to be recognized.